This video will focus on how to choose your test statistic and we will see our first two full hypothesis tests, the z-tests and the t-tests. Here's a step-by-step -step guide for performing a hypothesis test. The first step is actually to choose which test you will be doing. We'll come back to this very soon. Step two is to state your statistical hypothesis. Remember, there is a null hypothesis, which always states the absence of difference or the absence of effect, and an alternative hypothesis, which indicates significant change. Step three is to state the level of significance. Although any level of significance can be used, in this class, unless otherwise specified, we will use alpha is equal to 0.05. This means we have a 5% chance of rejecting our null hypothesis if it is true. Step 4 is to find the critical value. For now, the only possibilities we know of is z and t, although we'll see more as we go along. Step 5 is to calculate the statistic. And step 6 is to make the decision to reject or not the null hypothesis. The final step is to summarize the results. One of the main challenges is choosing which test statistic to use. Although we will soon progress to different statistical tests, the first two we will see are the z-test and the t-test to the mean. To know which of these is adequate, we can use this flowchart. The first question to ask yourself is, what am I comparing this value to? If you are comparing with the sample mean, then you must use this method to calculate the z-score. If you are comparing with the population mean, then you must ask yourself a question. Do I have the standard deviation for the population? If the answer is no, and you are comparing a unique value to the population mean, then you must use this method to calculate your t-score. But if you are calculating or comparing a sample mean to the population mean, this is the method you must use to calculate your t-score. Now on the other hand, if you do have the standard deviation for the population and you are comparing a unique value to the population mean, then this is how you calculate your z-score. If you're comparing a sample mean to the population mean, first verify if your n is actually bigger than 30. If your sample n is bigger than 30, then you must use this equation to calculate your z-score. But if your sample n is smaller than 30, you must revert back to this equation to calculate your t-score. Let's do a first full example. A report shows that the average salary of Quebec engineers with 16 years of experience is of $83,200, with a standard deviation of $5,216. One of your uncles, an engineer with 16 years of experience, earns a salary of $95,143. The question is, is his salary abnormally high? The first step is to determine which statistic you will use. Let's follow the flowchart. Now, are you comparing with a sample mean or a population mean? You're comparing with a population mean. Do you have the standard deviation for the population? Yes. Now, are you comparing a unique value or a sample mean to your population mean? You're comparing a unique value. So to calculate your z-score, you must use this equation. Second, you must state the statistical hypothesis. Remember that the null hypothesis is the absence of difference, so we state it as so. Your uncle's salary is equal to the mean salary of all engineers or is not significantly different from the mean salary of all Quebec engineers. The question was, is your uncle's salary significantly higher? Because we have a clue of direction, this is not a two-tailed test. Since we are asking about a higher salary, the test is a right-tailed test, and your alternative hypothesis will be as so. Your uncle's salary is higher than the mean salary of all Quebec engineers. Step three is stating the level of significance. Since nothing else was mentioned, we choose alpha to be equal to 0 0.05. 
Step four is to find the critical value. To do so, first sketch what you are looking for. This is a right-tailed test with a 5% level of significance, so your sketch should look like this with a 5% area in the right tail of your distribution. Our Z table gives us areas to the left, so we must find the Z score associated to an area of 0 0.95. Look it up in your table. You should find a Z score of 1.645. Step 5 is to compute the test statistic. Remember where we landed in the flowchart. That's how you have to compute your statistic. Here's the equation. With the correct numbers plugged in, here's what you get. Your test statistic is 2.29. Step 6 is to make the decision to reject or not the null hypothesis. To do so, let's bring back the sketch. How does 2.29 compare with the critical value of 1.645? That's correct, it is higher and as such falls into the critical or the rejection region. As such, we must reject the null hypothesis. Step 7 asks us to summarize the results so we can state that our uncle's salary is significantly higher than the mean salary for engineers in Quebec with the same level of experience. Now this completes our first example of doing a full hypothesis testing. In the next video, we'll do a second example and then you will be asked to do one on your own.